Why is there an Easter and what does it mean? Why did Christ have to be crucified? The Passover, 1500 BC, foreshadowing the second Passover. The Israelites were in Egypt in slavery under the rule of laws of evil men. The word British in Hebrew means people of the covenant. That means the people Israel of the covenant. The Passover was where the angel of death passed over the houses of the Israelites and killed the firstborn of Egypt from every household, including the Pharaohs, the king. It foreshadows the second Passover because the lamb was sacrificed and its blood used to paint around the door of every Israelite house to save them from death just as the death of the lamb of God, Jesus, and his blood saved the entire nation from the death at Passover 1500 years later. The Passover in the lamb's blood was the thing that brought about the end of 400 years of slavery and oppression under the rules and laws of man to freedom under the rule of God. His laws and economics given to Moses and to the British Israel people at Sinai. The second Passover, Wednesday the 21st of April 34 AD, not Easter at 33 AD. It was the second Passover because the Lamb died instead of the entire nation, who were under the curse of the law. What curse and why? The law was not a curse, but a blessing to all of those who kept it, God's law, not man's. It was a schoolteacher to bring men to Christ, the headmaster. So what was the curse of the law that had condemned the entire nation to death? As the British Israel left Egypt in slavery, hoping to never become slaves again, rule Britannia, Think about the words, you all know them. They swore that they would never kneel to any man ever again, only to God who had given them freedom from the rule of evil men. But a human's word and memory is cheap and short. At Sinai in Horeb, Moses was given God's laws, statutes, judgments, agricultural and economic policies so that the British, Israel, could live in prosperity and freedom from oppression under selfish men's laws and economic policies. The entire British nation accepted the contract, covenant, that had been made, at first, with Abraham, their father, because he did not withhold his only son, the miracle child Isaac, on top of Mount Moriah. Under the covenant contract, the British swore a solemnly binding oath that you would keep and do everything that God had commanded to Moses, forever, and would be God's servant nation, his wife, and faithful to the marriage contract, the covenant, and his demonstration people, to the rest of the world. That demonstration was to show the rest of the world how wonderful it was to live under God's laws and economics as opposed to men's evil system, all of them including so-called democracy. Under the terms of the marriage contract, God gave the British Israel the land flowing with milk and honey, the milk of human kindness and sweetness, the land of Israel. He said that as long as they kept his ways and did not commit adultery, unfaithfulness to him or each other, he would bring the sun and rain in their seasons and he would make their crops grow abundantly and they would want for nothing. They would live in peace and safety and be happy and prosperous. With no need for crime, there would be no poverty and everyone would love and help each other. Love your neighbor as much as yourself. The idea behind this was so that the Gentile nations outside of Israel would see how wonderful it was to live under God's system and would want it for themselves. They would have two options and would choose the wrong one first, as humans always do, and that would be to try to take Israel by force and steal what they had. But, under the covenant, marriage contract, God had promised the British that he, as a husband protects his wife, would fight their enemies for them and defeat them and that one British man would chase a thousand, and they would flee in terror. So then the Gentiles would have to take option two, quote, if you can't beat them, join them. And they would come to British Israel and ask if they could join them, whereupon they would be told yes, if they kept the covenant too. This was to be the grafting in of Israel, of the Gentiles, so that, little by little, the borders of Israel would enlarge to take in these Gentile nations, and eventually the whole world would become the kingdom of Israel in God's kingdom on earth, with justice, freedom, safety, and prosperity for everyone, not just the strong, powerful, and rich, like under men's evil laws. However, they broke their promise and the covenant and allowed greedy, selfish, evil people from amongst their own nation to make up their own laws, economics, and customs to make the commandments of God of no effect. Because of this going away from God's laws and economic policy given in the books of Moses, the first five books of the Bible, and turning to man's laws in the Talmud, the people became slaves again. This time, they were not slaves of foreigners, 
but of the rich people whom they've allowed to make up the laws to cheat them and make them poor and themselves rich people within their own nation. So they had broken the contract and were not given God's demonstration as they had promised and would not be able to help God to bring the Gentiles into the kingdom as there was nothing worth joining. The system had become no better than a Gentile one. The curse then came into force under the covenant were blessings for keeping the contract and penalty clauses or curses for breaking the contract. As they had broken the contract, they had come under the curse, penalty clause, and the curse was death for the whole nation. They had already sold themselves back into slavery, and poverty and death was to follow. So once again, the nation needed to be freed from slavery and death, just like the Passover in Egypt 1500 years before. As the covenant came into being, because Abraham did not withhold his miracle son Isaac, the only way to save the entire nation from death was for God to annul, cancel, the contract, and the only way he could do that was by sacrificing his own miracle son from the virgin birth, unless the nation accepted his son's sovereignty and returned to his laws and their duty under the old covenant, accepted at Sinai in Horeb. This they refused to do, so the contract had to be cancelled, and the only way to do that was for God's Son to be sacrificed instead of the whole nation. The new contract, Testament, then came into existence for those who wanted life and freedom. It was necessary to sacrifice the Lamb to free the people from slavery, poverty, and death under the curse and under men's evil laws in the Jewish Talmud, and return them to freedom under God's laws in the Bible once again under the New Covenant, Testament. There should not have been an Easter. It should have been a second Passover, because it happened exactly the same time of year. Jesus and the disciples' last supper was the feast of the Passover, and the setting up of the New Covenant, Testament, marriage contract, under which, if everyone returned to God's laws and ways, and to serve only Him, they could have life and freedom. So where did Easter come from? Easter comes from the word Ishtar, which was a Babylonian pagan fertility goddess of the Babylonian mystery religion of sun worship on Sundays, which is why it is celebrated with eggs, because eggs are a sign of fertility. Easter is a totally pagan festival that has absolutely nothing to do with Jesus, the crucifixion, which is the second Passover, or serving God. In order to serve only God, which is the first and most important of all the commandments, and to do his will, Islam in Arabic, they would have to learn to communicate with him so that he could teach them how to be ye perfect even as your Father in heaven is perfect. If people did this, they would reap the benefits from divine wisdom, love, law, and justice instead of the evil that comes from the rule of men who are guided by Satan and his selfish, hateful, greedy, and unjust and destructive ways. The priests, lawyers, and politicians had made up their own laws in the Talmud and misled the people, the blind leading the blind, away from freedom into their evil system, which made and kept them all rich and powerful and allowed them to prey on the people and steal the people's share of the wealth under their homemade illegal and fraudulent laws, James 5.4, and economics, Isaiah 3.12-15 and Ezekiel 34.2 and 8, James 5.4. Behold the higher pay of the laborers, who have reaped down your fields, which you kept back by fraud, crieth, and the cries of them which have reaped, and had not been justly paid, are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabbath. Isaiah 3.12-15 to As for my people, children are your oppressors, and women rule over them. O my people, they which lead thee, cause thee to err, and lead thee astray, to thy destruction. The I am standeth up to plead, and standeth to judge the people. And the I am enter into judgment of the elders of his people, the princes thereof, for ye have eaten up the vineyard, the share that belongs to the poor is in your houses. What mean ye that beat my people to pieces, and grind the faces of the poor, saith the I am, Lord of hosts? Ezekiel 34, 2 Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel, prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord I am, unto the Levites, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel, that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? 34, eight. As I live, saith the Lord I am, surely because my flock became a prey, and my flock became meat unto every beast of the field. Because there was no shepherd, neither did my shepherd search for my flock. But the Levites fed themselves, and fed not my flock. Therefore the priesthood, in false system, had to be abolished, and it was abolished forever. 
at the crucifixion to make way for the return of God's rule and ways and the new covenant, under which there was only one priest, the high priest, Christ. Ezekiel 34.10 and 23. 34.10 Thus saith the Lord I am, Behold, I am against the shepherds. I will require my flocks at their hand, and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves any more, for I will deliver my flock from their mouths, that they may not be meat for them. 34.23 And I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them, even my well-beloved servant. He shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd. At the crucifixion, the temple veil was torn in two from top to bottom, and totally destroyed. Why? What was the significance of the veil that made it so important that God needed to destroy it at the crucifixion? For the answer, we have to go back in time 2,000 years to around 2,000 B.C., to the time of Abraham and Isaac. God chose Abraham because he believed and served only God and no one else, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Abraham was willing to give up the most precious thing to him on earth, his miracle son, on Mount Moriah. Remember Mount Moriah. Later, the shepherd boy, King David, asked God if he could build a house for God to live in. He was answered, quote, Am I a man that I need a house to live in? I am God and need no house. I live in the heart of every man that invites me in to live with him, so I can teach him how to be good like God. However, because King David had been God's well-beloved servant, God decided to allow David's son Solomon to build a house, temple, on Mount Moriah, where Abraham had taken Isaac to offer him as a sacrifice to God centuries before. That temple or church is the only one that God has ever given man permission to build, and it is Satan and his priests who blasphemously claim to work for God, who have built all the others and every denomination. He does not want a house to live in. He wants to live in your hearts as a welcome guest to teach you how to be like him. Good. The temple on Mount Moriah had an outer courtyard and inner sanctuary, which was called the Holy of Holies, the most sacred spot on earth, and the exact place where Abraham offered up Isaac, and it was known as the Holy Place, the Holy of Holies. This Holy of Holies was separated from the outer court of the temple by the temple veil, curtain. No one was allowed to enter the Holy of Holies except the high priest, who went in there to communicate with God. When the high priest of all time was crucified by the Jewish priests, lawyers, and politicians for challenging their authority, and the temple veil to the Holy of Holies was destroyed, this was to show the world that, from that moment on, the priesthood was abolished forever, except for Christ himself. Since then, through his teachings of the New Testament covenant, everyone had direct access to God, even if they followed the teachings exactly as they are written and not misinterpreted and corrupted by Satan's priests, who have had the audacity to say they serve Christ when they do the opposite of what Christ says, thereby misleading the people away from God and again into believing that God lives in a house and outside of their hearts, which is the opposite of what God wants. They teach people to sing silly songs that help no one instead of teaching Christ's teachings about how to learn from God, how to make the world a better, fairer, and safer place, free from poverty and crime, as they should be doing. Anyone who has not signed up for the New Covenant in its entirety is as good as dead because you are still under the curse, penalty clause of the Old Covenant, slavery and death. There is still time, but only just. Read Isaiah 42.7 and my handbook for prisoners, prison officers, and governors. Print out or send for a copy to send to your local prison and or people you know or know of who have been imprisoned. Isaiah 42, 7. To open the blind eyes to bring out the prisoners from this prison planet and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. You all are in slavery to the rich and in poverty and always have been because you have not kept the covenant and have allowed evil, selfish people to make up illegal laws and economic systems to cheat you and make you poor and drive some of you to crime to survive and feed your families, exactly as God warned you more than 3,000 years ago by his prophet to you, Isaiah. Read Isaiah 3:12 to 15 and Isaiah 42, 20-22 for yourself to see what it really says. Isaiah 3, 12-15 As for my people, children are your oppressors, and women rule over them. O my people, they which lead thee, cause thee to err, and lead thee astray, to thy destruction. The I Am standeth up to plead, and standeth to judge the people. And the I Am enter into judgment 
of the elders of his people, the princes thereof, for ye have eaten up the vineyard, the share that belongs to the poor is in your houses. What mean ye that beat my people to pieces, and grind the faces of the poor, saith the I am, Lord of hosts? Isaiah 42, 20-22 Seeing many things, but thou takest no notice, opening the ears, but he heareth not. The I am is well pleased for his righteousness' sake. He will magnify the law, and make it honorable. Cross-reference Deuteronomy 33:21. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them trapped in pigeonholes, and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey, and no one delivereth them. For a spoil, none saith, Restore their share to them. Deuteronomy 33:21. And he provided the first part for himself, because there, in the position of the lawgiver, was he seated, and he became the heads of the people. He executed the justice of the I Am, and his judgments with Israel. You can set yourselves and the entire working class free from poverty and justice by keeping the covenant, fighting for the kingdom and justice for all, and for a return to freedom under God's laws of liberty and economics, instead of imprisonment or slavery under Her Majesty's Congress or anyone else's illegal laws and economics. The new covenant is waiting for you to accept it and to do your half, so that God and I can do ours. It has been waiting for 2,000 years for you to come to your senses and open your eyes and ears and listen to us and only us. The Ascends and the disciples called themselves the Covenanters, and the early disciples called themselves followers of the way, not Christians. Copyright 1991, JA, All Rights Reserved. If you want to know the truth, read The Way Home or Face the Fire and my other booklets. There is no Good Friday. It was on a Wednesday. Most people have been wrongly taught and therefore believe that Jesus taught only for three and a half years and was crucified at Ishtar on 33 AD. So please do not take what I am going to say as something personal against any of you. It is not meant to be taken personally by anyone and is only meant to straighten out the common misunderstanding and set the record straight as this site is dedicated to truth. This teaching of three and a half years, of course, is untrue. Like most things you have been taught by your blind guides, and a close look at all of what Daniel, the Old Testament prophet, wrote, will prove it to be untrue. Daniel 9.26 And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself, and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be a flood. And unto the end of the war desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, the lake of hellfire, and that determined shall be poured out upon the desolate. So here we have the proof that God said the Messiah would confirm the new covenant prophesied in Ezekiel 34 for one week, meaning seven years. Seven years, not three and a half years. The reference to being cut off in the midst, middle, of the week, therefore cannot possibly refer to the number of years, but only to the day of the week, Wednesday, not Friday, as the pagan so-called Christian churches teach, just like they teach the false date of Jesus' birth being December 25th. They have done the same with the crucifixion. It was on a Wednesday, the middle of the week, not on Friday, the sixth day of the week. Jesus arose from the dead on the Sabbath day, Saturday, three days and three nights after a Wednesday midweek crucifixion exactly as he had prophesied he would do. King of Kings Bible, Matthew 12:39. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and unfaithful generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Ishtar, Easter Friday, to Ishtar, Easter Sunday, is only two days, not the three days that Jesus prophesied it would be, which is further absolutely obvious proof that the teachings of the blind guides of all of the so-called Christian churches, none of whom can see the obvious, is a lie, proving beyond doubt that they are indeed blind guides. The crucifixion was on Wednesday, the 21st of April, in 34 AD, 40 years after the birth of Jesus, in 7 BC. To say that the ministry of Jesus was only for three and a half years, as the blind guides who falsely claim to work for God do, is to contradict God in Daniel, who said it was seven years. 
Those who contradict God are, by doing so, opposing God, which proves that they really work for Satan, the opposer, and that they do not work for God. Do not allow yourselves to be deceived by them, or you will end up in the pit with them, exactly as Jesus told you. King of Kings Bible, Matthew 15:13. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone, they be blind leaders of the blind, and if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch or pit. Amen. So be it. Jah.